Pretend like you hadn't seen the thumbnail yet. What would you reckon to be the most universal type of steam locomotive? I think many people would answer 460s. That type was the most produced passenger steam locomotive of all time, with the Prussian P8 contributing over 3,900 members. Then there's the 440, which, although very popular through the mid to late 1800s, was the go-to for passenger work for any sort of long-distance railway. 440s, however, lacked the longevity and flexibility of the 460. I, and people far more knowledgeable than me, propose the most universal locomotive to be the 280. The 280 came into existence in 1866, with a locomotive named Consolidation to work for the Lehigh Valley Railroad, built by Baldwin. Nine years later, the 280 was the principal locomotive, within the USA at least, for hauling, and it is not hard to see why. In the US, the favoured locomotive over many of their routes in the 1860s was the 440. Ease of maintenance and reliability over poor track having cemented them as America's engine. In fact, the 440, within the USA, is known as the American type. But with double the powered axles, a 280 can put far more of its weight down onto the track. And although not quite as flexible as a 440, the inclusion of a self-centering radial front pony, an innovation by Baldwin himself, made for a locomotive which was still able to traverse curves at a pace. The added benefit of a leading axle is more stability of a rough track, causing fewer lurches than a locomotive with only non-articulated wheels. That being said, the premier 1866 locomotive was not wholly original, being a mere modification of a standard 080 shunting engine, or switcher, to create America's next engine. Number 63, as consolidation was numbered, was to work the heavily graded Mount Carmel route, rising 133 feet per mile, making great use of her power. Coal was then the majority of train loads, though in 1868 that traffic vanished. Nevertheless, here we can see the trend emerging for the use case of 280 locomotives. That trend being... Minerals. Minerals have a long shelf life and rarely benefit from express delivery. Whereas meat and fish trains benefit from fast locomotives, quarried stone doesn't suddenly go bad because the train delivering it was not quite speedy enough. Indeed, save for a few inevitable exceptions, 280s would always be a wheel arrangement associated with small driving wheels for a greater torque effect. Back to number 63, the LVR was so impressed with it that they ordered another 14 examples to be built to similar specifications. The name Consolidation quickly began applying to all 15 members of the type, and eventually it would be a widely recognised nickname for the 280 wheel arrangement in general. In America, at least. Weighing just 90,000 pounds, or just shy of 41 tonnes in real measurements, the power to weight ratio was tremendous. It is now that I have to mention the concept of a loose-coupled train. Loose-coupled trains, also known as unfitted trains, are consists where all that's linking each individual item of rolling stock to one another is the coupling. There are no continuous air or vacuum brakes or safety chains for extra... safety. If you want such a train to stop, you can only rely on a brake man in either the guard's van or a caboose at the rear of the train, and the locomotive itself. When picking a locomotive to haul a loose coupled train, you're mainly looking for two factors. The number of driven wheels, and a tender. Rarely, if ever, are the driven wheels on a locomotive left without a brake. The more point of contact you have per rail, the higher the brake force is. The same principle applies with tenders. Tender wheels have brakes too, and so often add another six or more point of contact to increase stopping ability. This is why the ideal heavy drag freight loco looks something like this, and why railways around the world quickly found out to rarely do this. As for LVR's number 63, her importance to the overall story of the 280s ends there. She was withdrawn in 1912, and is probably now an empty tin of beans in a ditch somewhere. Effectively, the most significant thing such an important innovation can do is become irrelevant due to having inspired greater things. And inspired, greater things were. Very few people will argue the 280 was not the ideal locomotive for long-haul drag freights. Nowadays, 
At the other side of the steam age, we can state that the 280 was the most produced steam locomotive of all time. Around 35,000 280s having been built worldwide. Every railway had a use for a 440. But every railway needed a 280. Unless, of course, you're Irish. <laughs>